Hey, good morning. Hope you all have my glorious Sunday morning here. Um, things are getting right terrible in the world. <laughs> the good book says that uh, things will be like they were in the time of Noah when uh, the Lord returns. The book says Jesus is going to come back. And uh, take us who are his children, his adopted children, those who believe on him, out of this world. And then will come a terrible time of tribulation, <clears throat> unlike anything the world has ever known. And the world has seen some pretty hard times, so it's going to be pretty rough. So I don't want to be here <laughs> to experience it. But... Uh, I wanted to look at a passage back in uh, Genesis. Let's see. It's Genesis 5, verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I know that sounds kind of cryptic or <laughs> a little strange. That's all it says about what happened to Enoch. It does say earlier that uh, in verse 22, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. This, is just, this section is just given kind of the generations. In the New Testament it mentions it. In Hebrews 11, 5. Hebrews 11, verse 5. It says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. This happens to be talking about faith. I'm, I'll read verse 6 too. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well, Enoch had great faith, and he must have diligently sought God and wanted to be with God and have a relationship with God because it says that God took him and it uses a um, term translation to describe what happened. He was translated from being a creature of this world to being a creature <laughs> in the heavenly realms. Uh, translated from this world to to the next uh, without dying because he pleased God very much you know God must have really cared a lot for Enoch to take him out of that world back then it was pretty nasty like it is <laughs> today wickedness everywhere and, and then it says in the book uh, in the, the last times it'll be like it was in the times of Noah just before Christ returns what does it say about uh, it says and this is in 1 Thessalonians 4 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead shall rise in Christ first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It's talking about our translation. Us who are children of God, who believe and who seek to please Him, 
diligently seek to please Him. It's interesting that they use the term translation. I always thought, but it's, it's a good term to use. What does it say actually is going to happen? It says in verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And then it goes on to say, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. I don't think anything in the history of our world else needs to happen that would bring things more in line with Christ's return. In other words, I don't think there's anything to stop him from coming back right now. Um, He wants to come back and take his children out of this world and then bring judgment on the earth for those who rejected him, those who didn't want to receive his free gift of salvation. I'm not making any predictions. Well, this what I'm talking about is what we call nowadays the rapture, just being caught up. Um, you don't like the term rapture some people say rapture isn't in, in the Bible nowhere but being caught up being translated is <laughs> um, when the Lord returns and takes us out of here and bring judgment on the earth you can read about it in the book of Revelation it ain't pretty <laughs> gosh man it's gonna be some terrible stuff going on I don't want to be around um, I'm just saying I'm not making any predictions that's going to happen soon. I'm just saying it could. I don't think there's anything stopping it other than the Lord's being merciful and wants to make sure everybody has the opportunity to accept his free gift of salvation through Christ's death on the cross and resurrection, through his shed blood. Um, but I wouldn't be <laughs> I wouldn't be loafing around if you're giving it some thought. I wouldn't be putting it off. Uh, it'd be a terrible thing if you say, "Well, I got something I want to do today tomorrow i'll I'll dedicate my life to him and accept the free gift, but today I got something else to do, and then next thing you know, <laughs> the rapture happens and it's too late, and you got to go through the tribulation trouble is if some people in their flawed reasoning think that they will just go ahead and turn to him <clears throat> during the tribulation God said he will give strong delusion and cause people to believe a lie those that rejected him and waited too long and they will believe the lie of the Antichrist and they will worship the beast thinking they're worshiping God they'll be fooled burn in hell forever so I always seem to get around to that again don't I <laughs> don't mean to it just comes out but anyhow I hope it's uh, there's something a little interesting for you to think about today hope you all have a, a great Sunday and uh, think about what I said think about what the book says not what I say Think about what the book says and uh, read the last book in uh, the Bible, read Revelation and uh, I don't think you want to go through that. If <laughs> it ain't enough to make you get down on your knees now, <laughs> I don't know what would. Anyhow, we'll catch you next time. See ya.